County after an exciting victory over number 16th ranked Arizona State. The fighting Texas Aggie football team comes home to Kyle Field to take on Ball State and Texas A&M celebrates the reopening of Kyle Field after two years of renovation and $450 million of construction costs. The fighting Texas Aggie band will step out with their second new drill tonight and will bring you complete coverage at their first home performance of this year. We'll also bring you our weekly cadet report and two new feature stories about Texas A&M and the Corps Cadets. And now on behalf of our corporate sponsors, BJ's Restaurant and Brew House, as we celebrate this, our 21st consecutive season of broadcast, this is the Texas Aggie Band Show. to help introduce this week's subject matter. Jessica? This segment features the latest news about a student in the Corps of Cadets who has a special special story to share. While many people are already talking about the elections that will take place next fall, a member of the Corps of Cadets was actively involved in the most recent election cycle, having been a candidate for a place on the City Council of College Station, Texas. Beyond that experience, he just completed an internship in Washington, D.C., and was recently named as Texas A&M University's student regent. Let's meet Alvaro Gabe Pereira, Biden Texas Aggie Class of 2016. Originally, I was interested in pursuing an Air Force contract, but I failed the medical, and so I wasn't able to do that. And uh, I just thought that the Corps, not only because I had uncles in the Corps, um, but just because of kind of the military aspect of things, would still be an interesting experience and give me a taste of what my life and career might have been like. So College Station is pretty much comprised half of students, half of adults. And so being how we have no representation on city council and local government in general, I thought that it would be a wonderful opportunity to go ahead and run for the previous election cycle. So unfortunately, we were unsuccessful, but it was a wonderful opportunity. We got some students to get out and vote and hopefully raise some issues to the local community. So in running for city council was great. I got to know th what the issues are that face our city, uh, the people who are on city council, the people that normally vote. And I also was able to get a taste of what it's like to encourage people to vote, especially young people, especially university students. It's not on the forefront of our minds, but it's very important regardless. So a lot of the things that affect students are issues with renting homes, um, things along the like of being a transient resident, really. And so those were, those were very important in terms of articulating those and communicating those to the city council, but also just serving as a conduit to, conduit to communicate things from the city council to students and vice versa. And so not only my advisors, but my professors as well and my other fellow students were very supportive of my campaign. So to get the student region position, we first have to apply and it's a several step process. But at the end of the day, it's an appointed position by Governor Abbott. And so I'm very glad to have been honored with the position. And I'm also glad that several people along the way have supported me. In order academically to have time to pursue the position of city council, I switched majors to political science from engineering. So because I would have a few extra classes due to my change of major, I chose to go ahead and plan on taking an extra semester. So my coursework this fall and then the spring will also be a little lighter as a result. Um, but also being a senior in the Corps, of course, it affords me some more freedoms. And so that'll definitely make the job a lot easier. So of course, I'm definitely interested in staying involved in government, but we'll see. Uh, this position right now is definitely my main focus. So after this semester, once football season's over, I might have a little bit more time to sit down and think what I want to do come winter 2017 once I graduate. Thanks to Cadet Pereira for joining us this week. Each week at this time, we'll have a trivia question about the Corps of Cadets, the Aggie Band, or Texas A&M University. Below is the second question for the season, brought to you each week by our sponsors, the Texas Aggie and Corps of Cadets Association. Stay tuned for the answer at the end of this broadcast. The success of any organization and their longevity depends on them replacing those in the ranks they leave. And such is the case for the Corps of Cadets, because each year at Final Review, the senior class leaves, and they have to recruit a new freshman class to come in. Back at the end of 2011, the Corps stood at 1,800 cadets, and they had been standing there for about three or four years. And the cadets knew that they had to increase their ranks if they wanted to continue their importance at Texas A&M. So for the past four years, in 2012, 13, 14, and 15, they went on an increased recruiting campaign to draw more freshmen into the Corps of Cadets. 
when membership in the Corps of Cadets became optional in 1963, the recruiting and retention efforts took on greater importance. Add to that the increased academic requirements for admissions to the university, the ability to grow the Corps of Cadets has faced increased difficulties in adding to the ranks. The university understands that when a new student comes to Texas A&M, convincing that young man or that young woman to accept the stoic lifestyle of a cadet is a challenge. Yet with the appointment in 2011 of General Joe E. Ramirez, Jr., class of 79, as the Commandant of the Corps, the approach and techniques to recruiting and retaining cadets has changed and paid off. The strategy has paid off. In fact, for the incoming class in the fall of 2013 and 2014, both numbered over 800 freshmen reporting to the Corps of Cadets. And yet this fall, for the 2015 reporting class, they'll be known by the moniker of 2019, they had 913 freshmen show up, the largest on record in 40 years, and now the Corps numbers over 2,700 cadets. The Corps is excited about their possibilities of continued growth, and we got a chance to talk to some of the cadets who are responsible for recruiting and making it a success for Texas A&M. As a C Company recruiting officer, I'm mainly entitled to oversee and enforce the policies that we come up as an outfit for recruiting. I make sure that the policies from the combined band are passed down and well known throughout the outfit so they can carry on their responsibilities as the recruiting chain. As a new outfit, only about three years old this year, um, we essentially had to come up with entirely new policies and pass that down through the chain and entice new recruits to come to us and tell them that they could be part of this new outfit and create their own vision with us and essentially choose where they wanted the outfit to go. And that worked as a really good recruiting aspect for us. The best thing I can do to recruit people in, into the band and into the core is you got to invite them over and you got to give them the best time. You have to show them why Texas A&M, the Corps of Cadets, and the Fighting Texas Aggie Band is the best in the, in the country because if they don't see it for themselves, they'll never believe you. A lot of times parents come in with their cadets and they're almost like helicopter parents and the second they show up, the, they'll come up, they'll say their son or daughter's name and we say, no, try again. The son or daughter needs to say their name. And we try to cut them off a little early, but we also still have somebody talking with the parents so they don't feel completely out of the process. For the Corps of Cadets to actually adapt and change to the way the university was asking for them to raise the admission standards shows that they're willing to take on the new challenges and succeed. And when Old Army asks me, well, the Corps is not as tough as it used to be, I tell them it's tougher to get into Texas A&M, and now it's tougher to stay in at Texas A&M with the academic requirements that this university places on all students. But the cadets are excited about what they're doing, and they're looking forward to continuing great things for the keepers of the Aggie spirit. While the growth in the Corps of Cadets is exciting news, even more importantly these days is the fact that the Corps is achieving also in the classroom. And in fact, when you talk to cadets, their most important objective coming to Texas A&M is to achieve their degree. And to that end, while some people may say core activities detract from their ability to perform in the classroom, it's actually having the opposite effect. And this week, we got a chance to talk to the Commandant's office and some of those people who are making it happen so the cadets are achieving both in the quad and in the classroom. Spring 2015 was a remarkable semester for our cadets for many reasons. Uh, as we have for the fifth consecutive semester, we posted a 2.9 or higher. The spring GPA was a 2.98, and that's fantastic, highest on record for the Corps of Cadets. In addition to that, 57% of the cadets in the Corps posted a 3.0 or higher. And we are to the point where the majority of the core have a B average or are better, which is a fantastic place to be. Uh, this is a great young group of young men and women who are really looking for ways to make themselves better and their peers better. So coming off of our, our spring semester GPA, this group and this fall really has decided this is the semester they want to hit a 3.0 term GPA as a core. Ms. Simpson mentioned some additions to her staff this year, and they are the student learning assistants. We got a chance to talk to two of these young students who helped the cadets prepare for success in the classroom. I'm a core learning assistant and what that is, uh, the core cadets gives the cadets the, the, the skills required to be organized and plan everything out, but I am there to supplement the, the learning aspect. So I help the core cadets in the, in the technical skills needed in order to succeed in the classes. Uh, some of the individual flash could be the transition from high school to 
uh, as one of the biggest universities in the country. And my job is to help that transition become easier from the, from the academic standpoint. Uh, and the Corps of Cadets does a wonderful job of giving them the leadership skills required in order to succeed. And I supplement the, the academic aspect of that learning process. What I see in the Corps of Cadets is, is uh, a lot of myself as a, as a freshman. I see their struggles, I see their late nights, and, and I, I wish I had somebody like myself uh, like t uh, giving them pointers on, on how to keep those late nights a little bit less uh, of, of, of a late night. And yeah, it's been a wonderful experience for me, you know, encompassing the leadership uh, uh, for myself and, and teaching them what, uh, what, what I've taught, what I've learned this four and five years uh, that I've been here at Texas A&M. I was contacted by an advisor in the Corps, and she found me because I was another tutor for an organization um, through the MSC. So I think um, I think a tutor position is really important to to pretty much everyone, especially the the cadets, because um, they are here to to be leaders, and I just want to help them um, to accomplish their goals and academically, and then. Uh, also in their lives. I have four different outfits that are underneath me and I do diligently work with the scholastic sergeants, seeing as how I'm a scholastic sergeant myself on the major unit level. I go directly to them once I'm finished with my evening study time inspections, making sure everything's taken care of. So everything gets reported directly to them and then they go and they work with the outfit as far as that goes. I'm looking forward to working with my staff and with the other sergeants and officers and outfits to uh, work toward getting that goal achieved and making sure that uh, each fish and each sophomore, even the upperclassmen that aren't making the grades that they need, are taken care of and that uh, everything is, is right in place like it should be. Uh, to get across to the freshman cadets that they are not majoring in band, they need to keep their studies up. I, I recommend to them to always, if you have any free time, don't sit there. Be productive with your time all the time. If you, have, if you have an hour break, try to get a little bit of studying in any time that you can, Try to even while you're studying at lunch. That way you can get sleep at the end of the night and you can be more productive for the next day as well. I interact with the cadets uh, in the band by going into their rooms, making sure they're studying, but also asking if they need any help on any other classes and seeing if I can match a certain cadet to a certain upperclassman who's taken that class before, seeing if I can match them and give them the help they need to succeed in the class. The academic staff is really a group effort that starts from that new student conference and really follows a student through their four years in the core. One of the things that we've heard from our partners on campus and faculty on campus is we don't do enough of getting our message out to those on campus. And there are a lot of faculty members and staff members who have no idea what all goes into a cadet and their experience in the core. So we have started a new program this year, a faculty dinner initiative, where we will invite colleges to come in and have dinner with the core as a college. Faculty members, staff members get to know what cadets are doing, what it takes to be in the core, what their plans are after graduation, but also for that faculty member to talk about what they're doing and their research initiatives and what's going on in, on their side of campus as well. And we're really hoping that this dialogue will start and, and just grow from there as we invite our, our faculty members onto the quad. Every time we do a story in academics, it still amazes me that these young men and women who come to Texas A&M can achieve success in the core and in the classroom. But Texas A&M has that goal of producing leaders and getting them ready for the workforce. But yet they do achieve great things based upon the study habits they learn in the core cadets. And while many of them may say getting that Aggie senior ring or putting on those senior boots may be their top prize, all of them will say their ultimate achievement is getting their degree from Texas A&M University. I am Joshua Simon from College Station, Texas, majoring in environmental geosciences. On behalf of the senior class of 2016 and my buddies here in the saxophone section, here now is a halftime drill of the Fighting Texas Aggie Band at the Texas A&M University versus Ball State football game at Kyle Field. Hey.
West. It's been a great week leading up to the reopening of Kyle Field here on September the 12th. On the screen now is the answer to this week's trivia question brought to you this week by our sponsors, the Texas Aggie Corps Cadets Association. And we'll be right back here next week as Texas A&M takes on Nevada for the third game of the 2015 season. And the fighting Texas Aggie band will step out with a brand new drill. We'll bring you complete coverage along with our weekly cadet report and new feature stories about Texas A&M. And now on behalf of our corporate sponsors, BJ's Restaurant and Brewhouse, as we celebrate our 21st consecutive season broadcast, this has been the Texas Aggie Band Show.